Um, hey everyone, my name is Biong, uh, aka Code Searcher. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Sourcegraph, and today I'm going to talk about Cody, uh, Sourcegraph's new AI-enabled uh, coding assistant. So for those of you who don't know what Cody is, it's something that we launched uh, just last week. Um, let me share my screen and show it to you all. Um, can you all see that? Uh, or no? Do we have to, maybe Justin has to, oh, there we go. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, this is Cody. Um, Cody is uh, an editor plugin. And you can basically think of Cody as uh, ChatGPT, but in your editor. And uh, crucially, it knows about uh, your code. Uh, zoom in. Um, let me know if uh, anyone's having trouble reading that. So you can ask it anything you can ask ChatGPT. So, you know, for instance, uh, write a Fibonacci uh, function in, I don't know, TypeScript, uh, markdown formatted code blocks. And Cody will think about it <clears throat> and boom, writes me a recursive function. I could be like, uh, how about an iterative non-recursive implementation? Let's see how it does there. And boom, we have an iterative implementation. So uh, this is pretty cool, but if you've used ChatGPT, uh, like I'm sure many of you have, it's like, yeah, not that, not, not that impressive. It's, it's kind of nice to have in your editor, but you know, what more can it do? Um, well, what, one of the things we wanted to do uh, when we started working on AI enabled stuff was figure out how to combine uh, the power of large language models with the power of uh, the whole you know, source graph uh, search and code intelligence engine that you just saw. Um, and so one thing we wanted to do is to give uh, large language models access to context about your specific code. Um, and so I have Sourcegraph's uh, code uh, open right now. And uh, one piece of Sourcegraph's code base is the actual Cody uh, source code implementation, uh, which we just open sourced under Apache 2. So I thought for this demo, uh, why not use Cody to uh, learn about Cody? Um, so I'm going to say a prayer to the demo gods. Uh, you know, we, we saw a, a couple of mess ups earlier. Cody is still very experimental. Um, it is also kind of like fundamentally random as all large language model output is. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so first thing is let's ask Cody, how, how, do, how does source graph Cody work? Okay, so Cody tells me, Sourcegraph Cody is an AI-powered programming assistant. It works by reading your code base and code graph, understanding your programming intent and questions from natural language, retrieving relevant code contexts and documentation to generate answers in code, and using machine learning models trained on public code to produce code suggestions and explanations. It integrates Sourcegraph to have access to your code and use machine learning models from third-party providers. Uh, and critically here, Cody will actually tell you the files uh, that it reads to come up with this answer. So it's not just, uh, you know, if I, I if I just ask ChatGPT this question, uh, ChatGPT would probably hallucinate an answer because its training set, its tr uh, memory does not go past 2021. Uh, and Cody was just launched last week. And so it probably just makes something up. Um, but Cody knows about the code in your code base. It knows about your recent commits and, and all that. And, and it's essentially reading your files to uh, come up with an answer that combines the, the knowledge of the language model uh, with, uh, you know, all, all, all this context about your specific code base. So let's dive into this a bit. Um, let's, let's ask it, uh, which files define Cody's main view? So let's say I'm just like onboarding. Oh, it does this sometimes. Let me try resetting the chat. Which files define Cody's main view? Let's see if this works this time. Ah, all right. Uh, let's try this. Main view implementation in this code base. Oh, unbelievable. Okay, uh, let's see. Where is the main view of Cody defined which files? Um, so sometimes it screws up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> sometimes you have to rephrase it. This is something that we're working on, uh, you know, 
uh, very urgently. Um, it's just a matter of prompt engineering and getting uh, the underlying language model to, to follow your orders. But in this case, uh, it reads a bunch of files uh, and it tells me the main view is defined in this file. This file exists and indeed this is uh, the main view. Um, we can also see some of the other files that it wrote. So there's this chat-based uh, view, um, the subcomponent in the main view, and I can ask it, hey, uh, can you explain what's going on in chat.tsx? Say at a high level. Okay. And then now Cody should read this file. And it tells me, chat TSX renders a chat UI for Cody, displays a chat transcript, previous messages, the input area to type new messages and handle sending messages to the extension. So instead of having to read through all this code, I can get a quick high level overview of what's going on and incorporate that into my mental model of the code. Now, let's say I wanna you know, uh, dive a bit deeper and I'm at the point where I wanna make a modification to this code. Um, so right now we've been hacking on Cody uh, very quickly um, there's a lot of hacky code in it right now. Um, so what if I wanted to write a unit test? Um, so I could get a head start on that just by asking Cody to generate a unit test. And it kind of combines its knowledge of how, uh, you know, unit tests are typically written in uh, TypeScript and combines that with the context of, of your code base to generate uh, a proposed uh, unit test for this function. Um, let's see, what else? Let's say I wanted to document this. I can also generate a doc string for this function. Um, so here, I can copy and paste this. Uh, we're working on a couple of UI niceties uh, soon. Um, so soon there'll be like a button where you can just like paste this in uh, directly. Oh, sorry, I got the, I forgot I had Emacs key bindings uh, set up here. Um, TJ's probably laughing at me in the chat. Probably some Emacs jokes happening right now. Um, so here, I, I just added a doc string uh, to this file. Um, let's say you know I wanted to refactor Cody to a different language. So let's try translating this to a different language. You know, let's say I, I want it in Python, and uh, it'll do a reasonable job uh, of translating it in, into Python. Um, what else? Uh, I can also summarize recent code changes. So, you know, keeping up to, to date with what happened recently in your code is something that people you probably kind of don't do right now. Cause like, who's gonna read through the commit log? Uh, well, the answer is Cody will read through your commit log and just give you kind of like a, a bullet point explanation of, of what changed. Uh, and so the idea behind Cody is, is we wanted to combine, again, the power of language models is the power of source graph. And source graph is really the, the key thing here because it's fetching relevant uh, contextual snippets um, from your, your code base, from the specific repository. And soon it will also fetch uh, context from your, your broader uh, organization's code base. So different repositories, uh, uh, repositories that are related to this one through the dependency graph of code uh, and from the broader world of, of open source as well. Um, and so just to kind of like, you know, show a picture of how this is all working since this is, you know, a, a dev talk, um, basically the idea is Cody today lives in your editor. Um, it can also, it will also soon live in, in the source graph UI itself, but, um, today it lives in your editor and the user will ask Cody a question and then Cody will take that user query and then query source graph. Uh, we call this the code intelligence graph. It's the kind of summation of all the different source graph APIs that we've built over the years, code search, find refs. Uh, we have ownership data. We're soon going to have some pretty neat like security data as well. Uh, we have a large scale refactoring module that can, you know, uh, scale a, a change across your entire code base. And then we have knowledge of Git. So it's going to fetch all this context from this kind of like knowledge graph about your code and then feed that knowledge to the large language model. So basically it's talking to ChatGPT or, or in our specific case, Claude, which is Anthropic's uh, large language model. Claude is great. Um, it's very good at, at kind of explaining its reasoning and, and uh, logicing, it, logicing its way to the right answer. We synthesize all the context that we get from the code intelligence graph, uh, feed that to the large language model and also feed the large uh, language model, the user query. And then the language model will come back and, with a response. And that response is generally pretty good, uh, but sometimes there's still hallucinations, you know, like you just saw earlier, you know, Cody was like, well, I don't have the context to answer that. It was like, no, Cody, actually you do. 
Um, so we have a post-processing step where again, we use the, the power of the code graph to validate and verify. So if, if you noticed um, the files that I was cooking uh, earlier in the history here, uh, I don't know if you can find it, all these were linked. So like that's a, the post-processing uh, step where we actually verify you know, the symbols and the file names that uh, we get back from the large language model actually uh, exist. And that's, how, that's one way we can detect uh, uh, hallucinations. And once we've done that validation ver verification, then we can synthesize all that into a user response and answer your, uh, your question or your request, whatever that might be, like a, a high level question about the code base, or maybe you're just searching for some specific code snippets or, or files that define a piece of functionality. Um, so that's how Cody works at a high level. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the source code of Cody lives inside the source graph uh, repository. Source graph source code is actually all public. Um, it is not all open source, uh, the source graph part that is. Uh, we follow kind of like the open core model, much like GitLab, where the majority of the code is, is open source under Apache 2. But then there's a couple folders labeled enterprise uh, that you know deal with SSO and, and that, that sort of thing that are uh, enterprise licensed. But Kodi itself is 100% uh, uh, open source under Apache 2. And so it lives in this subdirectory. Um, you can clone down Sourcegraph's main repo and start poking around. Um, we have uh, contribution, contributing instructions right here. Um, and if you just want to install Kodi, uh, just go to docs.sourcegraph.com and find Kodi in the sidebar. Uh, and the instructions you probably want are Kodi on sourcegraph.com. Uh, right now, we're still, uh, we still need to enable your account manually, but we are approving basically any requests that, that come through. So there is a simple form that you fill out and then uh, someone on our, on our team just kind of like uh, goes through those uh, a couple times per day and, and approves all of them. And the reason we do that is just to cut down on like, you know, bot spam and, and things like that. Uh, we're working on a way to automate all this, uh, hopefully in, in, in the near future. Um, there was a blog post uh, that we wrote um, end of last week that kind of explains the rationale behind open sourcing. Uh, long story short, we think just as developers that it's just nicer to use open open tools, right? Um, and there's a lot of cool innovation happening now in developer tools uh, using large language models uh, in the editor and on the command line, things like that. And um, I don't know about you, but I just like it when my tools are open, where I can expect the, the source code and potentially, you know, contribute back a, a piece of functionality or a feature. You know, who among us has not felt like, you know, uh, hey, I, I really wish that, you know, say like GitHub did this one thing, but because the source code is, is proprietary, there's just like no way of actually, uh, you know, making it do that thing other than, you know, tweeting or, or filing a, a, an issue and, and hoping for the best. Um, and so really like we're kind of acting in source graphs best interest, I think in open sourcing this code, because we, at the end of the day, are a business that serves developers. And I think developers have a general preference for, for more open tools. But one thing I wanted to drill in on, um, in particular, uh, that also feeds into this, why open source rationale is talking about like this, the ability of the large language models, this, this, you know, brand spanking new AI. Uh, to reason about things. This is one of the, the cool, like unexpected abilities of these language models, because initially a lot of them thought, well, it's just next token prediction. So it's going to emit, you know, text that sounds, uh, sounds human, but is just going to be gibberish and logically incoherent. Well, actually what we've seen with, you know, Anthropic's Claude model and ChatGPT and other open source models uh, is that uh, these things actually have uh, some notion of, of reasoning. They have this kind of quote chain, chain of thought ability. And uh, one thing that we've discovered, um, and there's an excellent a blog post from uh, Yao Fu uh, that I re recommend uh, folks read, is that the the emergent ability of these models to kind of reason and and follow these logical steps actually emerges from training on code. So like the, the key factor, it appears in allowing, you know, ChatGPT to, to be more logically coherent is you have to train it on not just natural language, but also code. There's something about the structure of code that just kind of bakes in this logical reasoning ability into these large language models. So it's not just like if you're using uh, an LLM for a code gen that you're, you're actually making use of this, like the, the, the complete wide world of uh, open source knowledge. Uh, it's actually any time that you're using ChatGPT in a way where you're you're asking it to reason uh, 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 through a, a problem or a question, 
that's actually relying on the fact that it was trained on basically all the open source code in the world. So we personally felt like, hey, you know, the, the standard AI enabled developer tool that everyone uses ought to be open source itself and kind of contribute back to this just like wonderful ecosystem um, of, of open source code that exists and, and, and enabled these uh, language models to kind of quote, quote, think uh, in the first place. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically it about Cody. Um, please download it and install it and try it out. Send us all your feedback. We want to build this in the open and we want to make it better as quickly as possible. There's a bunch of low hanging fruit right now, a bunch of rough edges as, as you just saw. We have a Discord um, where you can pop in and say hi. Here's a URL and um, I think uh, Justin or someone else might drop that in the chat. Um, but yeah, uh, try it out and uh, let us know what you think.